I'm just going to show you how to make some bead frames today. And those bead frames are going to be for um, a project that I'm going to do, a tree of life on a square. So the first thing I do, I have about a 16 gauge water wire here and uh, you can also get uh, a thicker wire than that. Don't get a too thin because um, it may not hold up because that's going to be the basis for your whole project. Okay, so basically I've drawn my own square and I've measured it out so it's about an inch and a quarter all around but if you want to make it smaller or bigger you can do that as well. So halfway through I'm going to touch it there and I'm going to bend down. Okay, and then once I'm there, I'm going to hold it again. Actually, I'll just rotate it so it's easier to see and do. And I'm going to go right at that corner again, and I'm going to bend again. Okay, and you know where this is going, right? Next one is there. Now, this might be easier if you just cut some. I'm going to do that right now. Cut my wire because I'm kind of close to where I want to be. Okay, so far. And then I'm going to go right here again, use my chain nose pliers and just go. Now it's, it is too long, as you can see, but that's all right because I'm going to trim that back. If you want to measure this perfectly according to your square, you can do that as well. So I'm going to trim it back so that those two ends are almost flush. So right about there. Okay, that's gone. Now, now that we have that, I'm going to file down the edges to make sure they're as straight as possible because the whole thing is, is I'm going to solder these together. And I am not a professional solder, solder person in any way. I'm not a silversmith or goldsmith or any smith of any sort. Basically, I just use it for small projects. And Okay, and to make a round bead frame, you're just going to do the same concept. You're just going to wrap something around a, a cylindrical object, object. So you have a bit of a circle, like a giant jump ring. And again, really it's the size that you're wanting for your project. And I'm going to just take that little nip off there. It's like a sharp end. We can file it as well, but for the now I can just take it off like that. Okay, so now I have, whoops. And I can always put that back on my, my uh, frame, or my cylindrical object to make it a little bit back in shape again. And, okay. So once again, I'm, that off. I stretch it out a little bit, but that's all right. I'm just going to file those ends. Just to make it as much as possible. All right. Bring it in as much as possible, so you're close as possible. And then we'll do okay, some So off. now everything lined up and ready to be fired, so I'm just going to take a drop. And this is a mix of flux, solder, and I guess a little bit of acid. Because I like everything to be as simple as possible when I'm doing soldering, because it's not it's not my it's not something I'm I'm really doing a lot of. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my torch. I'm just gonna fly it along and you're gonna watch that go and then slowly heat it up until it slides across. Once it slides across, then we will have goes, it's liquid, and it just kind of uh, follows the heat. Okay, that's one. And I'm just going to turn my gas up a little bit because it's a little bit low. All right, so that one's done. Try and wear a mask when you're doing this kind of stuff because it's not good for you. And the next one we go, oh, my solder came off, and I'll, hopefully that will come back up once it starts to melt. Generally, that will just happen. So I'm just going back and forth. I turned up the heat a little bit, so... Well ventilated area and you know the 
case I have it on a metal surface and it's on a fire brick as well, all safety. Okay, now that those are done, I'm going to quench them in my bowl because they're very hot. If you touch them now, you're going to really get a bad burn. Did you notice that? Okay. And then here. Okay, now you have an option to put it in pickle and that will take all this tarnish off. Or if you prefer um, the sort of rustic look and more of an organic look, then you can just go ahead and do your project. I'm going to go ahead and do my project. What I'm going to do to harden up. shape a little bit so there you go that's a bead frame now it's not perfectly square I mean if you wanted to get it even more crisp than this you could make a little uh, harder edges okay now I'm going to make the tree of life pendant uh, I've already made a few as you can see uh, this one is a from a homemade bead frame this one was an existing bead frame that I actually had on hand I can't seem to find anymore but if you can uh, this is done in sterling silver with tourmalines and just on a sterling silver chain uh, the other one is uh, peridot and it's on one of the bead frames I made and again it's on chain and uh, this is more of a rustic organic look to it so uh, the choice is yours whatever way you want to do it so let's move on Okay, so right now I have some really pretty amethyst um, beads. They're probably about three to four millimeters in size. I also have eight, um, six to eight, usually six to eight inches. It's better to have more than too little because you want you don't want to run into water wire. So it really depends upon your bead frame size. So uh, this is about a twenty-six gauge wire, and then I have my bead frame, which. Um, I just showed you how to make. So the first thing we do is we're going to go right in the middle of these wires and twist, okay? And this is gonna be your trunk. So that's what we're working on right now, okay? So once that's twisted a few beats, then we're going to go into spreading all these wires out so that you can attach them. As you notice, it's done sort of on an angle, okay? so that when you wear the pendant, it hangs on an angle. Now, if you wanted to just do it on the bottom without being on the angle, you could do that as well, which I think I'm gonna to try today just to show you the difference. Okay, so now I'm just spreading out these wires so that I can stabilize them on my, the bottom of my bead frame. Okay, and so you spread it all out, and now you want to have the bundles of two. So you, you should have um, four bundles of, of two wires, because you started with eight water, wires, okay? And so what we're going to do is going to twist those together, okay, twist them together. You don't have to twist it all the way down, because we're going to wrap that around anyhow. Um, so we're twisting, okay, and twisting. That's great. All right. That's going to be, it's becoming little roots. And last one. Sometimes just, some people like to twist with with the pliers and if that works for you, then you are more than welcome to do it. I don't find it works well for me. Okay, so now I'm going to just, I'm gonna do this right in the middle instead of on the side, because you can see, but it can be done on the side like I already showed you, uh, like I just showed you. Okay, so now you're going to just wrap it around a few times. We're basically just stabilizing it. So we wrap one around a little, a little, a few times, and then we're gonna go with the next one. Okay. And you don't have to wrap it 
too many times because the whole thing is going to be, you're having several uh, wraps to, to do it. Um, you might like to do it uh, just to make it look more neat. So that's really a personal preference if you like to have more wraps or less wraps. But as long as it's stable on your frame, then you pretty much are okay. Okay, and I will trim all those. And as you notice that the, the wire is a little excessive, but that's all right because like I said, better to have uh, more wire than less. Okay, um, and the other thing, as I always like to remind everybody, um, I've been frustrated by this many times before, always check your beads against your wires to make sure that they fit. Uh, because without that happening, the project will be spoiled because you won't be able to get your wire through. You'll have to go searching for new wires. So now I'm going to just trim these back. Okay. And you'll notice there's little tails on there. And I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to push those down because you don't want anything sharp against anybody. Okay. Piece of jewelry. Doesn't want to, you don't want it to pull out your clothes and so forth or can scratch you. Okay, now we're going to start and if you notice, I might have twisted a little too high up. So if that's the case, then you can just untwist your wires a bit to make the trunk a little shorter. Um, again, it's all adjusting according to where you want everything to start and finish. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to open this up a little bit. And that's the, that's the beauty of wire. You can un unravel okay, now. it back and I have that taken down so I've shortened the trunk a little bit and what I can do now is I can take four wires and twist them together a little bit okay and we're kind of doing one branch and then we'll do another four wires and again this is personal preference whatever you like and then we're going to spread those wires again and maybe do two together for another little branch and we're doing this before we're stringing any beads because we're trying to get some definition to this this tree okay and I'll show you what that looks like in a second so basically I'm just twisting and I'm just trying to make it look more tree like as you know like branches on trees are, are not uniform um, and this probably is a little more uniform than a tree would be but again it's really your choice you could do three <clears throat> three and three or um, three sorry three, three three and two um, or whatever whatever your preference is okay so now I have a little more definition to my tree now this is the time when I'm going to start stringing and I'm going to just start on the side okay and um, just have everything spread out like that and then we're going to just start stringing some of our beads on and this is like I said really pretty amethyst beads which easily slide on no problem there at all and um, you will thank your, yourself if you actually do do your checks because as I have stated before I've been frustrated more times than I want to admit. Okay, so now I've got that one done. That's pretty much as far as, as I can go with it. And now I'm going to just do one wrap around just to stabilize it. And I only do one wrap for now because this will give me the freedom to move it around wherever I like. Okay, so now the next one I'm going to do more of those on there. And again, you can use any color you like. You can use multi colors. You can use uh, crystals anything would would work um, it's really again your personal preference whatever you have on hand and whatever you like um, so that is the point of, of all jewelry projects to make something that you like that's unique to you or if you're making a gift and you know someone what someone likes and that's that's uh, up to you as well okay so one more time I'm just gonna make a wrap around and if you notice that might be I'm just gonna twist it a little bit because I want to try and fit it to the frame okay okay there and we're just gonna pull that through okay all right now I'm gonna continue on doing these and I will come back and show you um, when it's about halfway to three quarters done because it is just basically this okay so now I'm just gonna finish this up this is what I have so far I've been stringing the beads along and uh, going along as I as I go and uh, pushing pushing the branches together as I go um, if there's any naked spots you just want to make sure that you're 
filling it in. And if that means un untwirling a few wires so that you can get those spots filled in, then you can do that as well. Okay. And we're almost done. And then, as, as you can see, I've just done one wrap on each one. And if you put too many beads on, then just take one off. That works just fine. And even if it's sort of rising above the bead frame, I think that's absolutely fine. I really don't think that there's a problem with that. Okay, and I've got this one already halfway done. Okay. All right, and the last one. And you notice that the, um, the branches are still quite movable at this point because I haven't really secured them all the way. And uh, so that means you can finish it and adjust it and do what you want to do before you take it to the, the final stage of having it perfectly secured. Okay. And a few more. And these are really, really pretty beads and they're very sparkly and they really, you know, give a pop of color. But again, it's really whatever you like. And uh, this would be a birthstone for people born in February. If, uh, if you knew somebody who had a birthday in February or somebody who just likes amethysts. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do the last wrap. Okay, just to stabilize it, have a look at that. See if it's what you're looking at. If you wanted to pull some of these out to the side, you could do that. If you prefer that kind of a look, which is, which is good too. Okay, so I'm gonna say that's good for what I wanna do. And now I'm just gonna finish up wrapping. All right. And I'm going to wrap each one of these about three to four times, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to trim that wire. And then I'm going to go back afterwards. This is just a preliminary trim. I will have to go back and I will have to uh, make sure all those wires are tucked in really well. So I'm just going to use my pliers here because it will make life easier. Because I'm getting in between the beads and so forth. And you're going to do this for every one of them. Okay. And again, I will come back and show you the final product. So now you have your finished uh, tree of life. And there's two ways you can hang this. And one is uh, with the beads outwards. So the beads are coming out. So if you notice here, it's hard to know uh, if you can see it on the, uh, the video, but there's sort of, um, it's, uh, it's in a little bit more. Uh, sort of a 3D effect. Okay, and the last thing you need to do here is just take a jump ring, which I have right here, um, and then just kind of add that on there, and then you can hang that pendant on anything you want, either way. Okay, and that is, that concludes this tutorial on how to make a tree of life on a square pendant. Um, I hope you liked it, and if you like, please like and share if you think it's worth sharing, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for coming by.